Hey bestie, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Gigi. And uh, now that hopefully you've watched my story time this morning, I will link that right here. Uh, I think it's right here, right? Ding. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know why all of the reviews and stuff are late. So let's talk about the boys. Uh, I, it was season two, episode six, and um, it was a good one. Like, only a few things actually happened, but the way they laid out and the way that it takes place was just really enjoyable to watch. Um, there's a scene between... Uh, I'm just going to jump around, you guys. If you need a point-by-point -point breakdown of the show, maybe this is not the best channel for you. I'm just going to tell you what I really liked about the episode. I may forget some stuff that happens, um, but it, hopefully not because I really liked this episode. Um, basically, there's, there's several things happening at once. Um, Homelander is tripping because he knows that the girl he likes, and, and honestly, you've got to realize that he is transferred everything that he felt about is it Madeline something like that the chick from the first season played by Elizabeth Shue he's transferred everything he put on her all of this sick obsessive mother need he has which is understandable but it is still sick and obsessive he's transferred all of that maternal sexual narcissistic need for approval from this mother figure to Liberty. And I'm going to call her Liberty because that's who she is. And I like that better than Storm Front. Storm Front, right? Uh, so he's mad. He's mad at her. And she comes in to her house. I think it's her house. Yeah, it's her house. She comes into her house and is like, look, I'm sorry. She realizes he's pissed. And he ain't just going to burn her boobs. He wants to burn her in half. Okay? And she's like, look, I'm sorry. I'm never going to lie to you again. I'm going to absolutely tell you all the truth. And I'm going to start with this truth. And before we get into what that is, she has... She has this facility where there are all of these subjects that have been given Compound V and have various manifestations of that. And they are testing them and torturing them and trying to stabilize the formula. The facility also has a former member of the group called Lamplighter. And Lamplighter went into hiding years ago after killing some kids by mistake. And it was a mistake, but everyone just thought he did it, right? And Frenchie saw him do it and was supposed to uh, be watching him, but wasn't watching him because his girlfriends, it seems like they're in a little triangle of happiness together, one of the triangle overdoses. And Frenchie comes back to help save him, but it, that takes him off the trail of Lamplighter, and by the time he catches up to him, it's too late to save the kids that die. And those kids actually belong to, uh, what is her name? What is her name? What is her name? They are her grand, her grandkids. The, uh... Mallory, their, their former boss, I guess. Um, the, although they are back to working together again in a very quiet way. So while, while all... Uh, Mallory comes and she's ready to kill Lamplighter and he's ready to let her. But Frenchie talks her out of it because they want to use him to get to the bottom of things or or and and fuck some shit up let's keep it for real um in the meantime um uh, 
they all went together. Everyone went together. But when, when shit hits the fan in the hospital, and it does, one of the more, more powerful um, soups, for lack of a better word, that's the word they use here, she escapes and she lets everyone else out. And there's this point where one of the inmates has this enormous snake-like dong that just grows and cho starts choking out mother's milk. And I'm like, no, M.M., no! And you can see its head. It's, it's oh my gosh. Oh, and it's, you know, some some penises are spectacular and some are like, please get that away from me. And this was a very scary get that dick away from me. So, and I, all dicks are lovely, I'm sure. But there are some that are like, you know, and you're like, no. Okay. And this was that too, like crawling across the floor, big as an anaconda, nth degree. Okay. So, no. Anyway, um, they, they get out of there, but all of these other inmates escape and this one girl the, the the most powerful one she can just do this and crush it and why she allowed herself to be kept in this room i don't get it but she crushed all these doors she could have done that at any point so what they are holding on her to keep her in there i i, I maybe that's something we'll find out but um liberty comes in and stops her she jolts her with the electricity uh, so in the meantime, one of the soups comes in contact with the other guys in the van, and that is uh, Light Lightbreaker. What is her real name? Why can I never remember her real name, guys? It'll come to me. Um, and um, <sighs> wow. Losing her name made me lose literally everything. Butcher and um, the other kid. They're all in the van. And this, this soup comes up. And uh, he does his thing because he freaks out. And it's sort of a shockwave kind of thing. It's like an EMP thing. And it's, it shocks out... Uh, what is her damn name? It shorts out her um, powers. Anyway, it shorts out her power. Wow, this is great. Great video. Sorry, it is Starlight. Her name is Annie. So Huey and Huey's in the van. Annie and uh, Butcher get knocked down, and it knocks out her powers. So she can't stop the kid. He runs off. They run to the van to check on Huey, and he's got some shit in his gut. So they're out now for the rest of the, the thing, pretty much. Except there is a scene on the way to the hospital when she inadvertently... I mean, she did use her powers, but I'm not sure she meant to do it as hard as she did. And this dude gets killed. And when they... Because they're stealing his car. So that they can get Huey to the hospital as he's going to bleed out and her powers aren't working. And when she, like, she, she thinks her powers isn't working. So when it happens, it kind of startles her. And the dude falls back, smacks his head, and they take the car after she cauterizes Huey because he's got some metal in his stomach. So they, um, they take off and she sees there's a baby seat in the car. And she's just like, what the fuck have I just done? And that's what I'm, I'm like, he's got a fucking baby. <sighs> Shit. So anyway, um, so the others are going to work now with Lamplighter, get some information and intel on Vought. And let's go ahead and cut back to um, Homelander and his girlfriend because she starts showing him pictures and you start to realize some stuff as she's telling it to him and you're like oh man oh man so whew, she pulls some pictures out of this trunk and it's her with an old lady and he goes is that your great grandmother and she goes no that's my daughter she starts talking to him about her life and how she 
was born in 1919 or something, which makes her a little older than my dad. And um, I think that's what she said. And um, the, yeah. And she starts showing him more pictures and talking about how much she loves him because why wouldn't, of course she loves him. Why wouldn't she love him so much with all her heart? Because he's all she has right now. He's, he is the embodiment of everything her husband, the original Vought guy, Mr. Vought, has worked for her and her husband forever. And that she was the original Vought subject and the first one it worked on when they were doing this shit to make an Aryan race for the fucking Nazis. Fuck. This shit is crazy deep. So I cannot wait for next week. This show is so freaking good. Guys, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comment section. Since you're scrolling past them anyway, click those buttons down there and help this channel grow. I appreciate you spending time with me every time you come by. We will see you later today after I watch um, Love, Lovecraft Country. I couldn't make the words come out. All right, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye.